What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman here with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. Today's topic, we're going to address men's fashion, what to wear to keep them interested. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. I want to introduce our guest today. You are in for a treat. Our guest is a husband, a father. He's a pharmacist. He was selected as one of the fathers featured on coolcleveland.com on Father's Day and how they dress. There was a fashion tip that he left on that website that I thought was phenomenal that any man can take away from this or, or a woman. He says to always insert your personality into your style. It's not just about what you wear that makes you look good, but how you carry yourself from your smile to your demeanor to being approachable. Your personality helps you stand out and be more memorable to everyone that you encounter. I love that. He also has a YouTube channel, channel the Dapper, Dapper Aristocrat, which has more than 4,000 subscribers and counting, where he discusses clothes, shoes, accessories, and more that will help you continue to be a gentleman and stay dapper at all times. He also dropped a line of soap called Oso oh Dapper Soap Company, and I have my, <laughs> my bar as well. Um, but we'll talk about that. So I thought that was amazing. We can go on and on. Brave Hearts community, welcome Steve Arnold, aka the Dapper Aristocrat, my brother-in-law. What's up, Steve? What's going on, man? How's everything? Man, I'm doing great. I finally got a chance to get you on the pod. I see you've been doing your thing, man, and killing the game on social media. So yeah, I want to talk about what to wear to keep them interested. Okay. All right. Now, let's jump into this. What will you tell men to wear during the dating phase? So when you're dating somebody, I will recommend that you stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. So when I say that, what I mean is don't go and try to do something you typically don't do. Mm -hmm. Just continue to do what you normally do. But at the same time, you still want to put some effort into it. So you still want to wear pieces that you normally wear, but if you want to jazz it up, maybe get something newer, you know, um, add in newer pieces, you know, um, but always stay true to yourself. But at the same time, you definitely want to make sure your groom, your grooming is up to par. You want to make sure your beard is lined up nice <laughs> and oiled. You want to make sure you got that crisp lineup. You got locks, make sure they um, retwist it nicely and then neat. You know, you want to make sure, um, all the basics, you know, like brush your teeth, you know, make sure you smell good, put on that nice cologne. You know, you just want to make sure you look fresh and clean. You want to put forth your best self. Because, you know, when you dating somebody, it's kind of like an interview. You know, they don't know who you are. So you got to put forth your best self. You don't go to interviews with a T-shirt and jeans. You go, on, you go to an interview with a suit and you want them to take you serious and know that you take this serious. So... That's what I would, that's what um, guys should do, but it kind of depends on the setting as well. So um, like if you go on something, if you're doing something casual, you know, dress casual. You know, if you, if you if your lady or your, um, the person you're dating or even your wife, if she wants to um, want you to scale it up, then scale it up. You just got out of pieces to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what's up. I agree because with men, you know, our looks vary. Like you said, I'm glad you're talking about the twist and, and things of that nature and the way uh, you look overall. Because sometimes I hear sisters and, and I heard a lady on a podcast not too long ago, she was talking about how uh, some guys, they just don't care how they look. They just like, you know, take yeah. me as I am. And she's thinking you, so you're not going to try to impress me. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, <laughs> no, it's, it's not fair. Like, you know, just think about it. Women do all this stuff and they look they look amazing. They put on makeup, they got on perfume, they buy accessories, they buy that nice dress, they get shoes, they they do a lot for you not to show any effort like that. You know, you got to level it up. You can't just, you know, even even if you've been married for umpteen years. You know, I've been married for 9 years. I've been with my with my wife for over over 10 years, but I always, you know, keep it fresh. I don't know what it's like to um, 
to not put any effort in because that's that's just what I do, you know. She mm -hmm. she always any anything like I bring in the house, you know, regarding to clothing or something like that. Mm -hmm. She look at it and be like, oh, how you gonna pull that off? But she always confident that I'm gonna pull it off. Mm -hmm. You know, like I could buy, I'm always experimenting, doing new things. You know, I might see a pair of shoes and I'm like, I like that. It might be out of my um out of my norm, but I do it and it looks nice. So it's just mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like you said that coming out. Of, yeah. Breaking the norm. That's that's dope, because I will be transparent for a minute. And I've said this on a podcast before. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first met my wife, she was looking at me like, uh, nah, that's not going to work, bro. Mm -hmm. like, nah, you got mm it. -mm. She had a whole wardrobe, whole new wardrobe for me. <laughs> I was, remember seeing that, too. Uh, he was posting pictures and I was like, that dude looks sharp, man. <laughs> he was looking good, man. Yeah, thanks. Because I, you know, I went through a divorce and, and obviously, you know, my ex-wife was older, but now I'm married someone who's younger. So mm -hmm. she's a little more into the fashion style thing and I'm older. So I think I was somewhat in a time machine mm -hmm. and she's like, yeah, it's, it's two th at the time. It's 2017. That's not going to cut it. And I, mm -hmm. I thought I was live, but obviously she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how it is sometimes women like to they like to see their men look great you know mm -hmm. so they gonna do whatever it takes for the, for you to do that but as for me like some um every every guy is different you know like me i'm the type of guy i like to put the put forth effort not saying that other guys don't right but that's it's just fun to me but some guys this is not really something that they do you know like we talk about fashion fashion is more about you know clothing you know trends the style is more um, something that evolves over time. So it's just stuff that you learn, things you pick up, things that you experiment with. You know, that's basically what style is. Style is more important than, than fashion in, in, my, in my eyes because style represents who you are and what you wear and you carrying yourself and how your personality is. Like you said earlier, um, your smile, the way you carry yourself, it don't matter if you edgy or if you're a nice guy, whatever it is, it has to do with your style. So, you know, clothing, clothing plays a, a part in it, but it's mostly everything um, all in one to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So you said there's a difference between style and fashion. Yeah. I love that. That's, yeah. that's, and that's a good distinction. That's good to know because some people are just really trendy. Right. Opposed to, you know, so yeah, so they kind of trying to fit into something that might not really be them, but it's just like yeah. it's it's trendy, right? See, you know? the thing the thing with trends is that they don't stick around for long. You don't know how long they're gonna be here, you know. So so um, I'm trying to think. Of, I can't think of nothing that was trending. Um, oh, like like the dad jeans was a trend. Mm -hmm. um, big bulky sneakers are is a trend. It's something that's still going even now but that wasn't something that people were wearing you know maybe about five years ago you know what i'm saying it's a trend but things with the thing about trends is like if you're into that you you just gotta kind of spend money wisely like instead of buying like you know spending a whole bunch of money on trends you know go to places that are more affordable where when that trend ends, you don't feel bad about it afterwards. <laughs> you spend all this money on these shoes and you're like, hey, I just spent like two, three hundred dollars on these sneakers and now I can't even wear them no more. And I can't sell them because it's not the trend anymore. So just stuck with it. So I say for me, I say guys should, should mix it up. You know, you can go with trendy stuff. Just don't get too, just don't buy expensive trendy stuff, but then stick with the classic stuff that's going to stay around forever, you know. That's that's what I usually do. I, I get trendy sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I bought a pair of Yeezys just just probably like a, a couple, like a month ago. And um, I love them, but I know they're not going to, I'm not, I know they're not going to be around forever, you mm -hmm. know, but I like them a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, but it's good to have a good balance of both. For sure. For sure. That's what's up, man. You dropping gems already. You helping some people today. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of attire would you suggest for men who is married and does your attire change when you get married um yeah so when you're i guess i could speak for myself mm -hmm. for me like i was saying style evolves so when i first met my wife my wife i was wearing polos i was wearing um 
what I was wearing baggy jeans, <laughs> I was wearing a lot of sneakers, I was wearing um ball caps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And as I got older, things just started evolving for me. Like I I started looking at other guys and I like how they dressed. So I was like, oh, let me try that out. Let me test that out. And so I would test it and then stick around. But um, you know, it's just something that's constantly evolving. You just want to always keep it fresh and keep it, keep it new, you know. Um, continue to experiment because you know our wives benefit from us dressing nice our mm-hmm. our our spouses our our girlfriends or whoever we um we're dating they they benefit from it but at the end of the day you know what you wear is it's it's basically for you because when you put on these clothes and you get dressed it gives you a level of confidence you know when I dress up and look nice it gives me a level of confidence so whether I'm at work whether I'm shopping at the grocery store, whether I'm, you know, at church or whatever I'm doing, I'm more confident because I know I look nice and I get compliments from it. So that makes you get, it builds your confidence up, you know? So um, I think that as a, um, as a married guy, you, you got to keep it fresh, you know, continue to experiment. If it works, then it works. If it doesn't work, then it's okay, you know? But when it works, you just stick with it and you keep building on it. But um, it kind of varies, it's, you know, it's based on what you like. It's all about what, you, what you're what you into and what makes you feel confident. And if you're confident in it, then your spouse, your wife, you you know, your girlfriend, she'll like it too. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I think. But I mean, I could go more into detail, but it, it I really can't because it kind of depends on, it depend, it's, it's individualized. So mm-hmm. like, for me, I might want to wear like what I have on right now, but for someone else, they might be like, oh, I don't really like suits. I don't like blazers. You know, it's, it varies. Mm-hmm. So just continue to evolve and, you know, get your wife's feedback. If she say, oh, I'd like that. Then, then do it again, you know, but always add something new to it. That's what I recommend. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, man. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but because I was going to ask about your age as far as when you first met uh, my, my sister, opposed to how old you are now, if you oh, don't okay. mind sharing. But I guess that's the next question. Is there such a thing as dressing for your age? And how can I not look like a pawpaw? You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. yeah, that's a really good question. Um, like, like you mentioned earlier, I have a YouTube channel and um being in a men's fashion um, niche, it's a lot of us that kind of, you know, we we teach the same stuff. So some of us, um, a lot of us, yeah, your age, your your style and your age, it it it, it definitely matters. Because for example, like I'll be at work and I see like a, a sixty some year old man. He got on he got on Jordan Elevens. I'm like, bro, what you what you doing? <laughs> you know, it just it just doesn't look right. You know, so. Um, it's certain things that at a certain age, you, you just got to kind of let go of. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of, um, it's kind of interesting because our generation now mm-hmm. we're, the, we're a sneaker generation, you know, yeah. we, the guys, we were wearing Jordan ones. We was wearing, you know, Yeezys, you know, we were in air maxes, um, phone posits, you know, we wearing all of that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, as time goes, you know, even now, like they bring those shoes back. They, some of these shoes are our favorites. So, you know, when I turn 50, I don't know, I might pick up a pair of Air Max or whatever if they like my favorite, but I don't know. It's kind of how you how you rock it or whatever. But yeah, I, I believe that I believe that at a certain age, there's certain things that a man sh- a man should have. For example, um, when you're 20 years old, you know, 25, you should at least have at least one suit in your wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Only reason why I say that is because you know, you got to have an interview. You know, if you if you look for a job, you want to be dressed appropriately. You want people to take you serious. You want them to know that you want this job. So I know on my side in pharmacy, I've been in a manager mm-hmm. and I kind of, you know, gauge people on how they look as well. But I've also been somebody that has gone to an interview and mm-hmm. I want to present myself as someone that cares about the position. Like I really want this job. So you have to present yourself and look at, in that manner, you know, so yeah. every guy needs a suit and it, it could just be one, yeah. you know, just let it be a versatile suit, like a navy blue suit or a gray suit. So you can wear that to a wedding. You could wear that on an interview. You could wear that when your wife wants to go out to the nice restaurant, but she wants you to 
jazzy it up, wear a shirt and tie and suit, mm-hmm. you can wear it out with anything. But even though it's just one suit, you could change it up a lot of different ways. Change the shirt up, change the tie up, put a hanky on there. Don't wear a tie, wear a bow tie, wear a different pair of shoes. It's, it's, it, it varies. But at the same time, another thing I noticed is that younger guys, they don't, they don't carry wallets either. They pull out a stack of money and you'd be like, you know, yeah. where's your wallet? You know, you're carrying a credit card, you know, your ID got to be in your pocket. You know, you don't want to lose it. You just want to keep everything together. Mm-hmm. So there are certain things that a man should have at a certain age. Mm, I agree. Do you, um, cause my wife, she just got me on to, uh, to scarves. Like we went to the Burberry store the other day and she's like, I gotta have scarves. So we got scarves. I got a blue one. She got a, a, a brown one, but I, it's something new to me. Cause I'm, I'm not like a big scarf guy, but right. when I seen it, put it on, I'm like, Oh, okay. This is something that I can rock. Like it helps me feel a little more mature. Yeah. You know, so like you say about putting in the new pieces and stuff like that. And then how do you feel about wallets? Like, do you do you have any um uh I don't want to say like name brand because they're not paying us like name brand wallets. I don't know, but do you do you care about like your wallet game? Like would you get like a coach wallet or or I don't know, some name oh, brand? I, I do own a coach wallet and um but I got I got that wallet probably like seven eight years ago something like that but I I don't carry it anymore. Um, I got I got a story about that wallet, but <laughs> I, I won't I won't share it. But you I, don't want to share the story. I mean, yeah, so so the good thing about Coach is like um, I got mine from the Coach outlet, and then it started showing some wear. So I took it back, and I was like, hey, like this wallet is it, showing some wear. This is. You know, this shouldn't be happening. They they gave me a new wallet. Okay. I didn't have to pay for it. Okay. So I thought that was cool. So I still have it, you know, um, and it still looks good. But I don't carry it because it's too bulky. And my style is more slim. So I, with that wallet and me having a slim, slim aesthetic with my clothes, especially with my pants, I don't want my wallet, a bulky wallet in my pocket. It doesn't look good. So I go with a slim wallet. Now the slim wallet, it's from a company called Forrest and Herald. And um, I found out about this brand. I don't know. I forgot. I think, oh, I know. I, f- I saw a customer um, in the pharmacy and he had a wallet. And I was like, oh, that's a nice wallet. And he's like, yeah, I got it from this brand. So I, I looked them up and I bought one. So it's very slim. It's very minimal. You can't carry a whole bunch of stuff in it. And so um, I, I like that wallet a lot. And that's that's the wallet that I carry. Mm. so they are because you're getting me onto some game too so they are like sizable wallets where there's a slimmer hmm, interesting yeah but the only thing is that if you go that route you have to um you got to take some of that stuff out because like me i was used to carrying like all these cards gift cards you know what i'm saying (laughs) um you know those loyalty cards that you get from (laughs) different stores i was carrying that i even had like the letter my wife wrote me when we got married, I had that in there because it's still in there. I gotta make I make sure that I know where it is because it's very important to me. But um, I kept that in there. But um, going down to the slimmer wallet, I had to take a lot of that. I had to leave some of that stuff out, so I had to go with like stuff that I that's a, that's necessities like cards that I use every day, my ID, and then um, not keeping all the gift cards. Just keep cards that I use, like a Starbucks gift card. You know, you might use that once a week, so you carry that. Or if you go to the airport, they got a Starbucks in there. You know, you you got it. You don't have to spend spend your money. So, yeah. Man, that's that's some stuff. Yeah, you schooling me on some stuff too. That's why I got you on the show. So I need this for myself as well. <laughs> uh, men's clothing is expensive. Yeah. How can I still look good without breaking the bank? Man, so it's so much stuff you can do. Mm. One, I say, um. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, um, I'll break it down a little bit. So one thing you could do is you can go thrifting. Like a lot of guys don't really take advantage of thrifting. I don't know. I think it's mainly our mindsets, mm. but a lot of times you could find some pieces like this jacket here mm. is originally from H and M, but I got this from the thrift store. It was really? $9.99. Yes. $9.99. And I what? got it on a holiday. So it's half off on the holiday. So I'll probably end up spending like four dollars and 99 cents on this jacket and it's what nice. that's so nice like, huh which is that, like, no i said that's nice yeah thanks it's um it's cool i like 
Yeah, this is probably something that would probably be like ninety nine dollars at at H H and M. I would guess. I don't know specifically, but um, I bought it for four ninety nine at the thrift store. So oh, sometimes man. you can find some stuff. Um, I don't. I shop at the thrift store during the holidays because it's always half off. Mm. So I try to go to the thrift store then. I don't. I don't utilize that tip a lot, but I do um, occasionally mm. shop there. But yeah, like and even like with jackets like this. You can always get them tailored. And when you get jackets tailored, it's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but you, you're gonna be looking nice if you if you go that route. Yeah. But spending four ninety nine and then taking it to the tailor and getting it tailored, you might spend like maybe twenty thirty dollars mm -hmm. to get the jacket taken up, maybe and get this um get this to be slim to fit your aesthetic, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, thrift store is one thing. You can um if you got favorite brands that you like. But they might be expensive. Like for me, I like J. Crew. I like Banana Republic. You know, they they really expensive. So one thing I do sometimes is I, I shop the clearance rack. First place you go, check out them clearance racks, see what they have, you know. Um, I also I also subscribe to their email list. So when things go on sale, that they they send me an email. So that it'd be hard sometimes because there'd be a sale, and I'm like, I know I shouldn't be buying nothing. <laughs> But I still go check it out anyway. It'd be crazy. But um, so I do that. Um, shop the clearance racks. I also shop at outlets because like the same brands that you like, they have outlet stores as well. So I shop the outlets, and sometimes that stuff be like fifty percent off. Um, I'm still into sneakers a little bit, mm -hmm. so I bought a pair of um, Adidas Ultra Boost from an outlet store. They range. They like one hundred and eighty dollars. I went to the outlet. I pay like. I pay, I got 50% off those sneakers. Wow. So yeah. So sometimes you can find find good stuff in, in outlet stores, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's another route. Um, then you could try other stores, like there's another store, it's called ASOS. It's more of a web-based store. Um, they have they have different, they got different ranges to like the cheap clothes to like maybe um the higher tier. Yeah, but um, they're they're pretty affordable, and they make all different. They make clothes from diff for different body types. So you could be skinny guy, you could be average, muscular, mm -hmm. you could be like a guy that got a little spare tire like me. You know, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? That, that's a good place to go. Um, even like heavier guys, they make stuff for heavier guys too. Okay. Um, another brand, other places that people typically don't think about is like Target and Walmart. Like I shop at Target a lot. Um, I had to scale back because I was doing too much in there. But one thing I like about Target, I love their chinos. They got different colors. I like the way they fit. They got different fits to your slim, to your classic, to regular, to like guys that's a little heavier, the athletic fit. You know, you can find a lot of good stuff in, in Target. Um, and Walmart, I've, I've never shopped there before, but from what I understand, they've scaled up on their um, clothing there. And I'm thinking about checking it out one day. So I'll probably do that. My wife told me I should do a video on it. So I might do that. Um, okay. But yeah. And so that, that's typically what I do to kind of save some money. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah. Well, I'll be looking forward to that video because um, I heard that Walmart has, they've been making some changes as well, trying to make a little come up because Target got good stuff too. They have, yeah. they got some quality stuff. Yeah, they do. Um, I think some people kind of sleep on it because this is like, oh, like it's Target. You think of Target for other things, not so much as far as clothes. Right. Like that's the first thing on your list, you know. Right. Like, so yeah, but they got some good. And then I like t-shirts too. I like the vintage t-shirts. I'm always yeah, like, like today, I had on my Boondocks t-shirt. Like I just like. <laughs> <laughs> boondocks man hey, yeah right and I, I seen a lady today she was like i love your shirt i was like oh you boondocks head huh yeah that's what's up uh yeah i would look forward <clears throat> to that video and also i want to make sure that everybody go check out your video but we'll get that information from you at the end of the show um oh and then there's something i want to talk about too because i think looking one of the reasons why i want to bring you on the show is because sometimes we can get caught up in our marriages or in our relationships we've been with a, a person for x amount of years and we just kind of we either get frumpy or we don't prioritize our fashion and style like we should and i do think when you're wearing something nice you're like oh you look good in that you know or you know you're just doing something a little different to kind of i guess spice it up a little bit when you're going out 
you know, because you get used to just maybe going to fast food places or different little places, but taking that necessary time to get dressed up and, and still impress your spouse or, or your significant other. I think that's real important, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause my wife was telling me the other day, she's like, you really look good in that. And I was like, Oh, okay. And that encourages me to constantly right. keep my game on point. Right. Right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta keep it fresh and you gotta always put effort into it. It's so when you're married to somebody for a long period of time, it, it's so easy to kind of, you know, get lazy and just kind of be like, let me throw on this, this Emmett Smith jersey and these sweatpants <laughs> and, and go ahead and go ahead and go head out to this happy hour. Like that's easy. But Some flip flops and socks. Yeah. You know, <laughs> little flip flops and socks and, you, and your shorts, you look <laughs> little basketball shorts. Like it's so easy as men we do that all the time i don't i don't know why we do that but like i see that a lot like i'll go to a restaurant and i see a guy wearing a, a calves jersey and then i see his i see his lady looking all nice like she just got off for work and i'd be like like bro what are you doing so um it, you just gotta put some effort in you know it's, it's not hard it could be fun you know yeah. like i have fun with it because like i say I, I shop all the time mm. um but just having just buying different pieces and being like, oh, I could wear, I could wear those those pants with that jacket or wear that with this shirt. It's it's just fun to me. And then having a having a variety of shoes and stuff, whether you got dress shoes, sneakers, or boots, mm-hmm. you know, you can always change it up like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't forget accessories like hats and mm-hmm. you know, jewelry and bracelets and stuff like that. Even like with jackets, like wearing um lapel pins and stuff like that. Um, you just got to, you just got to keep it consistent. I mean, keep it, keep it fresh, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's kind of challenging because, you know, a lot of people, you know, as you get married, things change, you might get on a budget, you might have to, you know, you might, or you might, you might come up on some money, maybe you got a bonus or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, you ain't got to spend the whole bonus on a, on a, on a couple pieces, but maybe take like a, like 10 or 20% of that bonus in and get you something nice, you know, that's, yeah. that's what I, sometimes do but yeah you know it, it kind of everybody's situation varies but like there's so many things you could do to keep it fresh like mm-hmm. if you could spend you can go to the thrift store like i said four dollars and 99 cent jacket you yeah know, it's pretty simple yeah yeah and i think some of that maybe also have to at least from what i've seen is like demographically depending on where you're going in the thrift store like yeah. if you go in certain neighborhoods you know they thrift store might be they might go hard on a thrift store because they got all kind of nice stuff. You know, you're like, right. oh, I'm in this neighborhood. I know that's how it was when I was in Arizona. When I yeah. went to like the Scottsdale, uh, you know, places that, uh, yeah, they like, oh, they had nice stuff out there. Yeah, sometimes you go to certain stores and, you know, you go, like, oh, this, this, nah, this ain't hitting. Then you mm-hmm. go to it, like you said, different neighborhood. You go, like, oh, yeah, I found like three or four pieces in there, you know? Yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it takes it takes some time, though, like it takes some time. But once you do it, you kind of know where to go. I know for guys, we like to we like to go in the store, get what we want and leave out. You know, mm-hmm. women don't do that. They like to go look around, spend like a, a hour or so. You know, some women are like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Like like I know sometimes I could be like that, like I'm trying to get this and then I'm trying to head out. You mm-hmm. know, but, um, it, it's good to kind of like, you know, know where to go. You know, check out, um, you know, ask people for recommendations where they shop at, especially if they're a thrifter, a thrifter, you know, what what thrift stores do you go to and find nice pieces, you know, ask, ask, ask around, you know, then you can save yourself some time. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. <laughs> I thought I just thought about this question. Should a man have who should have more clothes in their closet, men or women? Man, it's that's that's a good question. Like in, in my household, I, I got more clothes than my wife because that, that's just how we get down. My wife is kind of like a um she kind of like a minimalist a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, but um sometimes if she sees something, she likes it, she pick it up versus me. Like I just want to be prepared at all times. So like if she'd be like, oh, we got this wedding going on this week i'm always ready so i don't have to go to the store and go shopping because for some people it could be frustrating you know Mm -hmm. trying to get dressed for an event you know the week of or a couple days of i don't have to do that i already be like okay i'm I'm gonna wear it is so maybe i'll buy a new shirt and tie and put it with that you know that just happened like a couple weeks ago so um but with her sometimes she has to go and 
you know, find a new piece. And sometimes it could be frustrating for her. And she'd be, you know, I'd be like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep going or you just gotta, you know, kind of build your wardrobe, have these pieces and be able to, you know, switch them out, you know, but I don't know. I think it varies. It depends <laughs> on, on your relationship. Like some people I know, they, they wife's got a lot of clothes and the, and the guy, they minimal. They don't really like doing all that shopping for real. So, you know, it, it kind of varies, but I mean, Every marriage is different. That's, That's how we are here. Yeah. No, nah, I hear you because uh, I, I really wasn't a big clothes guy. I had kind of had just a minimal kind of mindset. Right. And then, you know, my wife's just like always, the, like you said, these pieces, you might need this for this occasion. You might need that for that occasion. And I do see the benefit of it because like you said, you can always be ready opposed to, uh, because my wife and I, we went to, uh, a, a, a couple's uh, retreat last weekend in Houston. Mm -hmm. and some of the couples that we were talking to, they was like, we had a gala that night. Mm -hmm. So they like, oh, I got to go and get something for tonight. So they right. had to break what they were doing and then go and pick something out for that night opposed to already having everything ready. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but then you know how people are. Some people thrive in, in situations like that. Like, oh, it's the last minute. It's when I thrive the most or some people just it just don't work out like that. Like, that's how I am. I don't I don't. So it depends on what it is. I don't I some some things I thrive at the last minute. Some things I don't. And that's just one of those things. Like I like to be as most I like to be as creative as possible. But it, it kind of take me some time because I got to think it up. But sometimes I can have a piece and I'll be my wife would be like, oh, you know, we got this going on. I'd be like, you, she's like, you got something to wear. And I'm like. I ain't worried about that right now. I figure I yeah. figure that out later because I know I got some pieces. Mm. You know? So it, it kind of it kind of varies. Yeah. yeah. No, that's real. That's real. Uh, how important is the shoe game? Because women always talk about how important. You know, girl, I seen his shoes, and you know, because some women even live by that. They're like, if his shoes raggedy, then yeah, you know, he probably stank or something. I don't know. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think. For me, I think shoes are important. You know, being African American man, or you know, even even younger younger guys, you know, that's just how that's how we built. We built to know, you know, our shoes are important. But um, I mean, I I think they're important. But I think that I think it's it's important to the level where you have to you have to buy like high quality shoes. Yeah. Like, but some 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 in some situations you could kind of. You can kind of go cheap. Like if you're going for some gym shoes, you're going for something more casual. And sometimes you could kind of scale down, you know, not spend a lot of money. But in some situations, like if you get a, some dress shoes or some boots or something like that, you want something that's going to last you for a long period of time. And a lot of guys don't really consider that um, what what you can do with shoes, because, for example, I could buy like a pair of Stacy Adams shoes, which, you know, <laughs> African American community, we love Stacey Adams because they look nice. You know, they um, you know, they always, you know, they always trendy. You mm -hmm. know, they they make nice looking shoes, but um, no knock to them, but they sometimes their shoes aren't aren't the best, like as far as um being able to keep them for a long period of time. So for so they're they're priced, they're priced in that way sometimes, like okay, mm -hmm. I'm wear these shoes. For like a year and then i'm gonna have to give me some new ones but some shoes are made to where okay the sole is busted i could take this to a shoe store and they can they can add another sole to it and then i'm i'm back i'm rolling again mm -hmm. you know so but those shoes they they cost a little bit more money so it kind of depends like some with some shoes i think you should invest I'm not saying like, like it's an investment like a house or the stock market or anything but i'm just saying like when you have um when you have pieces that cost you a little bit more money they might last you a longer period of time mm -hmm. so like if you like for example i have a pair of shoes made by beckett seminar which is a small um dress shoe company they make your basic shoes but they make them very well they're high quality leather they're not too expensive at all and they make very great quality shoes but they have a blake stitching which means like if i mess up the soles i can go to a shoe store and not like like a cobbler like somebody that makes that fixes shoes and and leather bags and stuff like that. I could take it to that store and they can resole them, and then I'm back to normal. So, mm. um, 
that that's a good brand to check out. They're called Becky Seminar if you're interested. But yeah, um, a lot of brands make good shoes, but you gotta you gotta be careful. But then sometimes we spend like a five hundred or six hundred dollars on shoes, and some people can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Sometimes people, you know, miss out on that rent payment because they're trying to get the new J's. That's not a good look. But you know, sometimes you get you could find a, a nicer sneaker that might be like $70, $80. I could still, you could still get the same look. Yeah. I think it's important. Care, the care of your shoe is the most important. So mm-hmm. make sure they're clean and up to date. Not up to date, but mainly clean. Yeah. You're smelling good and you you in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Cause uh, I remember growing up, man, and my sister probably could tell you this, but we had one pair of shoes that we got to last us for the whole school year. Mm-hmm. so we was keeping them boys clean i guess i'm telling my age you know we had the old toothbrush and be scraping the the, the side of the shoe making sure that boy stay white you know trying to keep yep. them shoes for the whole school year so my wife bought me some uh she bought me some lebrons or something i mm-hmm. kid you not steve i think she bought these shoes for me like four years ago mm-hmm. they they still look good i'm just i'm just careful with the shoes that i wear so even on top of the shoes i get i have a lot of shoes because i just take care of what i have right that's how I- that's how all of y'all are. <laughs> all your siblings is like that. I know my wife is like that. Yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, <laughs> your mom raised y'all pretty good. Yeah. Uh, hey, man. Crazy stuff, man. By the grace of God. Uh, before I let you go, man, can you tell me about the 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 soap company? Can you tell? Because I I thought that that was like one of the most gangster moves I ever seen. Yeah. Tell me so, a little bit about the soap. Um, yeah. So I decided to start a soap company. Um, mainly to offer my um, my followers, um, I wanted something that I wanted something that everybody could afford. You know, I don't want I didn't want to have a product where you have to think twice before you get it. Like, oh, I don't want to spend like three hundred dollars on a jacket or or a suit or whatever. Um, I rather you know I don't have that kind of money, but I I spend seven eight dollars on a bar of soap because it's a necessity. Um, but at the same time, a lot of guys use soap that you get from the um, pharmacies and department stores like Dove, Old Spice. Mm-hmm. I like those soaps too, but the only problem with those soaps is that they have um, cancerous chemicals in it. Mm-hmm. So the soap that I make is handmade soap. I make it myself, um, has all the ingredients. You could pronounce the names of them. It's not like you gotta have a chemistry or, or a PhD to pronounce the names. So I got a lot of, I got soaps that's made out of um, coconut oil, olive oil, castor oil, um, a lot of different oils. And then they have a fragrance. And the only chemical you might see is like um, maybe mica, which gives it its color, but it's not really much of that used at all. So yeah, I, I think they're awesome. I have, right now I have, man, I got like five that's ready to go. That's they awesome. smell really good. Um <laughs> They don't dry you out. It doesn't um, have you breaking out of a rash or anything like that. Mm. Um, so, you know, some of those um, body washes we use, they can be irritating. Like I use a body wash and I notice like I come home and I be itching after, mm. you know, after going to work and stuff like that. And so I stopped using it and it stopped. So that's, you know, this soap is great for people with sensitive skin, people that, you know, you just don't want to use those chemicals on your body. You just want to use something that's natural or close yeah. to natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's why I did it. Um, and I'm I'm enjoying it. I, I enjoy making making my soaps and I'm always thinking of, you know, different things. Like I just bought some stuff today and I was like, I was, I was excited because I'm ready <laughs> to make some more. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about it. So I got a website right now that's selling some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's going pretty well, but you know, when you start a new business, a lot of your family and friends support it, you know, I'm thankful for that, but I'm trying to get other people to, you know, other people to support as well. So of course, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, um, I'm gonna let, I want all the Bravehearts community to make sure that you reach out and get some of this soap because, uh, I believe in supporting each other, you know, and of course we family, but overall, you know, being a, being a brother and, you know, helping you get your stuff off the ground, man. So Brave Hearts community, make sure you support that. I want to make sure that you give your information before I let you go, because I got to use, uh, I got to order some more and then use my soap. I figure I can use mine in my OnlyFans video so I could be using it in my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm tripping. I do not have an OnlyFans. I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm, I'm just messing with y'all. Y'all be Googling. Oh, Sean got an OnlyFans page. Let me see. This. Oh, and he used an also dapper soap. Anyway, uh, thanks again, Steve, man. I appreciate you and your time, man. Thanks for being uh, a, a fashion icon. I, I appreciate everything that you do, man. Thanks for being a, a dope dad, uh, a dope father. You, you, you know, take care of my sister and family, man. I appreciate everything that you do. So yeah, y'all go check Steve out. Steve, give us all your information, um, your socials and all that other stuff. Not just your security number, but your socials. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that so a brave heart can get in touch with you. Yeah. So I have a, um, I have a, um, Instagram and YouTube. So you can follow me at, um, the Dapper Aristocrat on um, IG and Dapper Aristocrat on YouTube, where I give a lot of tips on style and fashion. And um, Soap Company is, the website is osodappersoap.com. So check them out. Um, also, I have an Instagram for that as well. It's also Dapper Soap. If you want to check out the Instagram, it's kind of new, but I'm still working on adding more content to it. But yeah, that's that's where you can follow me. For sure. That's what's up, Brave Hearts community. Well, you heard it here first. Make sure you connect with Steve because he's amazing doing dope things out here in this world. So thanks again for your time. I appreciate everything that you do, man. This is Sean Heineman at A Scary to Remarry. Uh, make sure that you connect with me as well. If you're not following the podcast, make sure that you uh, visit the podcast on Apple Podcasts or anywhere where we're streaming. Leave a rating and review. I want to hear from you as well. Make sure you share this video with a friend and also rate and subscribe. There's so much social media currency that goes on that us YouTubers and stuff that we do opposed to just uh, supporting us financially. You can support us by leaving a rating and review. You can support us by subscribing and leaving a comment, all these different things. So uh, make sure that you show us some love. We appreciate it. This is Sean Heineman at Scared to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. Take care.